Aston Villa 3, Fulham 1. <sighs> Where the bloody hell has that come from? Um, right, I've already, I've already tweeted about this. Yes, it's the result that we wanted. We, we know coming into this that, um, okay, maybe top six and top four is now gone. Uh, but let's push on. Let's try and get a good momentum again coming back into this. Um, and obviously we're playing against Fulham, who, although they've been looking a bit much better in these last few games, ultimately the team we should be beating. Um, coming into it, uh, obviously we all know the Grealish news that he's not playing. Um, there's two ways to look at it, but I think we'll probably end up discussing this in another video. Um, on one side, if he did pick up an injury after the... Well, not an injury, if he did feel... Like he wasn't able to play the game today because he picked up something before the game after the conference. And yes, that is fine. That's acceptable. However, you know, we have weeks of this now where we don't know the injury. We don't know how long he was going to be out for. A lot of this management has been absolutely garbage considering the stature of the player that we have here. Uh, I just think that fans should be letting a bit more know about this. Um you know what I mean? We can understand if he's been injured, but don't just start saying, oh, he's at 99% fit, he's training, he's running, he's doing on the grass, you know. Um, don't say that, and then when we come to the game, he's not playing. What are you meant to expect? We've almost been promised it. You know what I mean? Just sort it out. Man, even otherwise, it needs to be better. Um, but on the game overall, um, it was crap. Absolute crap. I tweeted it and I said... Do not close your eyes on that performance. Yes, it's the result that we're reading. And looking over all of Twitter, it's quite frankly annoying. You know, you score your goals, we win the game, and everyone's kissing ass just because we've won that game. Stop. Don't close your eyes on that performance. It was absolute garbage. I was almost thinking, they're thinking we're playing as if we're deliberately doing this. So when Jack Reach does come back into the team, we play much better. It completely wipes out what this does, and we're all just going to forget about it. But ultimately, it was absolutely rubbish today, and I think really it was a lucky result more than a deserve because we were rubbish. You know, Fulham in that first half played really well. They were defensively really solid, shutting us down. But then again, really for most, we weren't creating anything. Had no shots on target until when we scored our first goal, um, and it was just really unacceptable for us. You know, um, and then obviously going into that second half. Um, a really, really crap mistake from Mings. Um, you know, I think, as I've said, it's been a really good player in these last few games. But I think today, as my, as my dad says, a mistake again, Mings. You know what I mean? He does make that mistake. He has that in his game and he's done it again, unfortunately. Um, but for me, in that sense, had the result been 1 0, I would still say, and I still say, I do think we need a centre half in someone with a bit more. Um, confidence and experience in themselves um but ultimately you know well, that's fine and he did make up for it with the assist to try to get his first goal who I slandered I did say I think he's still bloody um not really that great doesn't really score goals doesn't really make any assists um and these were his first two goals this season I mean he hasn't played that much but he would still come on um but yeah it was a nice bit of play there obviously to get the goal back in thinking Bloody hell, they've only gone and done it. And then, obviously, a few minutes later, we're coming back again. And it's Trezeguet. You know, Keen Davis does really bloody well to win the ball. Uh, gets in a nice cross in. Um, using his, you know what I mean? As we've said about Keen Davis, that big physical presence. Using that and being mu muscling. I mean, tossing off the ball, winning the ball, getting in. More of a lucky cross in. Trezeguet finishes it. Fair play to him. But I will say, Trezeguet, don't do this thinking you're all, all this bloody... Good plays, second good years, and you think you're on fire. You don't score goals, you don't really score assists. I can't really see you being here next season. So stop chatting raucous thinking you're oh, this bloody bad because you scored two goals and what you haven't done it in like, you know what I mean, since the end of last season. Pipe down. Um, but yeah, it was nice to get back into the game. And then obviously, we get the third goal um, with a tap in from Ollie Watkins. Um, I asked where we see how they're going to get a 3 1 win. You can tell the commentator and say, you can tell it on Twitter, no one knows how we've done that. But ultimately, apart from that, there's really not much to talk about with Villa because we didn't create anything, we weren't doing anything. I thought midfield was absolutely rubbish again. Um, that point where he's about to take Samson off for, Doug, for not doing so, for the Canber um, was a stupid mood. I would have rather taken off the Canber for Douglas Louise, considering I thought DL was giving away so many balls and practically giving Fulham chances. Begin for five minutes, did much well, and although he was pressing much forward um really what did he do in the game 
nothing, had no presence at all. Um, and I thought Sonson actually did quite well, did get a bit stuck in. Winning some balls off players, trying to make those tackles, trying to make something go of it. But I just didn't think it was coming off for him. Um, I do think, again, it was readdressing the window we need. Again, we've said this again, because it's going to happen again. We need more wingers. El Ghazi, I think the time's up with him. I just don't know how we're meant to continue on with him. But Trantura, I do think there is... I still think there's more time with him. You know, he's his first season back since uh, Chelsea all those years ago. Um, and I have seen enough from him to say that there is still a good player there. It's just going to take time. He just needs to work on using his right foot as well as his left. Um, and then Ollie Watkins just doesn't get the service and considering he's not a player that's going to be you know what I mean, going all the way back into the defence to try and win the ball and then sprint all the way up there. You know what I mean? It's understandable for him to be frustrated and tired looking because he's just got nothing to feed off of. Um, I thought man the match for me would be Targa. I thought although everyone was having a pretty poor game, I thought Target for me didn't really make any mistakes, looked strong and I think was really unlucky to not get that England call up, but I think today showed. Um, even in the face of a really poor performance and potentially poor result. Um, overall, it was a really nice um, performance. I mean, very strong, very commanding um, and really defensively just solid. You know, continually was Cash's first game back and the mistake from Mings and Cons, you know, that l lack of confidence that you could have been given when you concede a goal like that. He didn't drop his head, kept going in ultimately stuck with him and they got the result that they wanted. Um, but... Yeah, really, there's nothing much to say. I do think Fulham were unlucky in the end. I think, for me, it was just a bit of complacency. I think even they missed the four of it and said, you know what, they're not scoring. It's been 75 minutes. I think we've finally got this game in the bag. Um, and then perhaps just took their eye off the ball. And unfortunately, once you've taken it off it, it's quite hard to get it back. Um, and ultimately, Villa did capitalise on it. Um, but I think overall, it's just something that it should never be taken away. Yes, it's the result, but I just don't care about the result. It's just a performance that is not acceptable. And it's been like this again and again and again and again and again. And honestly, if Jack Grealish does come back and we start playing this good football, I do have to question... Um, you know what I mean? I have to question Dean Smith. I have to question the players. Because what have we been doing when he's not been here? Why do we have to play this poor? And then when Jack Grealish comes home, we play this great. Why does that happen? We had this before last season. We had this in 2018-19 when he did go off. Um, injured and he was gone and we played absolute crap and then he came back and we did that 10 game winning run why does this happen and it needs discussing and if if it had it been that 1-0 today I really would have been considering saying I'm not, I'm not Smith out but you've got to consider what is Smith doing to Warren saying he can keep going with his team and he can take it because really I don't know where we would have been finishing now if it wasn't for that result today um, but overall, it is a lucky, lucky result. They'd have really skanked their way out of that one. Um, but simply, let's not take our eyes off that performance because, quite frankly, if we're upset about that, look who we're going up against next. We've got Liverpool away, uh, I think. Um, so, you know what I mean? You have to get your, you have to get in shape there, lads, because otherwise, if you think this was bad, just wait till we go to work at Liverpool. You now look like they could be getting some form back. Um, so, yeah, we've got to step up. Um, and hopefully we will see Jack Reach back for then. Um, but as I said, ultimately, lucky result today. But let's not take our eyes off that performance because that performance is absolutely embarrassing. That's been my instant match reaction to Aston Villa 3, Fulham 1. Leave us in the comments down below what you thought of the game. But without further ado, I've been Ben, up the Villa with the pride of Villa. Get in, boy.